Welcome back to JMC Live. This is our 9-11 Remembrance episode. Do you remember where you were? Most of you that listen to our show are over the age of 10. <clears throat> so you can remember where you were. What you did back then. And according to the 7 Habits of of highly affected people. It takes 100 times to do something before it becomes a habit. How many times did you wave your flag for how many months? How many times did you thank a veteran or thank people in the military? How many events did you occur and, and, and get involved in? <coughs> Why can't we do that anymore? I know there's an issue with funding or we just don't have the time well, now with this economy, we have people coming home from Iraq. These men and women that are in Iraq, Afghanistan, and all across the country, including myself as a U.S. Coast Guard veteran. Yes, there are Coast Guard men and women in Afghanistan, Iraq, Kuwait, and all throughout the world. When's the last time you thank one of us? I have to say, I have been in Ohio... And people that are not related to me have not thanked me for my service. Oh my I God. don't. The, the last time you really were thanked was the in la, California. The, big, the last time I had a serious thank you moment was Open Door Church in Novato, California. I attended the church. I did not know this was going to happen. They, they, they called my name out, and everyone in the congregation stood up clapped and they all hugged me and there was almost a hundred people and I cried I was crying. that was the last time it happened the time before that it happened was when I was just got out of boot camp and was in Houston at the airport I was wearing my suit uh, now I wear like veterans you know shirts and caps and things like that nobody says anything I don't understand why we as a people have disrespect to people when I was in the Coast Guard uh, because after 9-11, there were some people in California that would throw rocks at us. They would spit at us. I'm in the Coast Guard. I'm not trained to kill people. You know, I'm trained to save people. Be like a rescue 911 guy. You know, and that's pretty much what I did. But they said, you killer and baby killer and raper. And they, they would call us names. I challenge you, and you don't have to say it to me, and there's seven people in the chat right now. Uh, I challenge you to thank someone who is in the military for their service. Uh, there's no reason why every every church this Sunday, I challenge you, that if your church pastor will not stand up and say, I, I want all the military men and women to stand up, I'm saying it right now. If you're in the military, and you're listening to this broadcast, I want you to stand up. And salute me, as I salute you, and say thank you for your time and service. May the Lord bless you, and keep you, and strengthen you and your family and your friends. There's too many people out there that don't understand the sacrifices of time. The biggest thing is because of the 9-11 event, being involved in the military and not even going overseas is a whole different story now. Mm -hmm. Even people here stationed, if they do not have a simple desk job from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday and holidays, they're doing 12-hour shifts. I did 12-hour shifts. Two weeks days, two weeks nights. Sometimes we'd have a meeting afterwards. So I'd be at work 16 hours. Or in the example where we got our Notorious team commendation medal. My team was in California, one, about a one hour north of San Francisco, and flooding came, and our unit is located below sea level. We were flooded in, mudded in, and the Coast Guard was one step away from actually flying us out. They were going to bring rescue helos to drop down baskets to carry us out because there was no way to get out. We ended up working 31 hours straight. I guarantee those that are in Iraq and Afghanistan, some of them can say they worked 31 hours straight. Yes, I worked 31 hours straight. Oh, let's take into consideration, I was in the Coast Guard during Hurricane Katrina. That was another extreme thing. And we have more 
hurricanes and more weather events that are occurred. Can I share? And the military is, yes, you'll be able to share. Okay. And the military is involved in that. The military isn't all about just blowing people up. The military is about our safety. If you cut out the military, there is no United States. Because anyone can come in and do whatever they want. But at the same point, I understand there's controversy about being in Iraq. There's controversy about being in Afghanistan. I know. But, freedom is not free, and there's a price that has to be paid. When you join the military, it's two, four, six years of your life. When you get involved in the military, they pay you $1,200 you know, $2,000 a month, and that money is paid not for 40 hours a week. It's paid for every single minute of your day. Like I told you, I was at a unit, and I worked 31 hours straight. Okay? I was in my office, in an underground bunker, a top secret thing, freezing with my coat on, working. Making certain equipment. Was not going to burn out. Checking on people. And I had the flu when this happened. So I'm trying not to get too emotional here. And say the wrong thing. Because that's how adamant I am about this. I'm very angry at how Americans treat veterans. And treat the military. Because there are Christians that are in the military. Yeah. Of all branches. The Bible is very clear in the Old Testament. You know Daniel and David. And other people where God charged them. To attack. And what happened on 9-11. We have a biblical right. To defend ourselves. Turning the other cheek. Is when somebody does something simplistic. When it's something on a broad scale. Such as that. You do need to try and seek out those that are. Trying to do the wrong thing. And with our economy. We do need to be conservative in our. Money. Because we are at war. And those that have, throughout history, since Washington on up, they were smart on how they did things. For the future for America, we're going to have to cut back some unneeded spending. Focus on the war and see what needs to happen. For Afghanistan to win, yeah, you need more troops. You could pull out and bomb it, but still, that's considered more troops. Because you got to pay for the gas. And that's anywhere from 50,000 to 250,000 gallons of gas just to fly a bomber over to Afghanistan and blow something up one time. So we must be diligent today. We must understand the sacrifices of our nation from George Washington. Abraham Lincoln. People that back, back then, they didn't have nice warm heated homes. And nice thick jackets and coats. Some of these men walked barefoot in the snow. For America. The Civil War. Some people fought their own family. Korea. Vietnam. Some people don't even agree with Korea War. And the veterans from the Vietnam War are still not being treated properly. If you're a Christian, you're supposed to accept it an example for people. And it's supposed to show the love of Christ to others. So I'm challenging you today. As we go to break, I'm challenging you today. Stand up for what is right. Hold on the truth. And speak in boldness. We'll be right back. <laughs> 